Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make an RPG in Unity and welcome to episode 35. This tutorial we're going to carry on exactly where we left off last time. I'm going to focus on these hearts right here. Uh, we're going to add in some ambience to our scene, uh, I'd change our footsteps I think as well, and maybe if we got time set up a new scene ready for our cave that we're building. And don't forget, click the subscribe button and click that bell icon to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload in this series and indeed everything else on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, if you remember last time, the spider over here, just a random enemy spider, he now takes health offers from our health bar. That's all good and well, but how do we add health when we collect these hearts? Well, there's something we have to do a little bit extra with these hearts because theoretically, as it stands now, we could collect them, but if we do collect them, we could end up having more health than we need. So if I go to heart collect here now, and on the script itself, if you remember, we add one to our health. So health monitor dot health value plus equals one. And if I go to the spider enemy, was it? I think it's that. No, it wasn't that one, was it? It was spider AI. So it's all done uh, via that health monitor. So I'm going to go into that health monitor script just to kind of um, keep track of everything because we're changing the actual size of that uh, health bar this way, aren't we? So what we would need to do with heart collect is let's say a heart adds um, maybe 20 to our health value. And that's all good and well doing it like this, but we could extend past that. Uh, maximum allowed range. So we have to set a couple of if statements inside this on trigger enter. So inside this on trigger enter, let's add if and in uh, brackets health monitor dot health value equals uh, three. 100, then basically we're going to do absolutely nothing. The reason being is we don't want to pick up health that we don't actually need. Now, theoretically, what we could do here is look at this and say, mm, well, Jimmy, what's the point in having nothing here? Well, Funny you say that because we may be able to do something later on. We may add a, add a little like extra spin to the heart, speed up a little and, um, you know, just a little something. So I'm going to put some quote, uh, some slashes in here, some annotations and just say add extra spin and sound. So we're not going to pick the heart up with that, but we will do a little something else. So the next one is uh, we have to think about it and say uh, what if we only have i don't know um 290 health if we add 20 we're going to send that to 310. so we need to establish a point where we say okay well if we have um let's say that 290 we only want to add 10 to it so we could set the value as 300 rather than adding to it so if and in brackets health monitor dot health value is greater than and let's say what was it 280 so if it's greater than 280 and so we need a double ampersand there health monitor dot health value is less than 300 then do the following and what we'll need to do is copy those lines of code make sure you copy and not cut and we'll say health monitor dot health value equals 300 because remember I know we keep going back to this but this health bar itself is set at 300 and that's going to be our standard health value so at that point, we also want to say, yep, that's fine. So the alternative to that would be if 
health monitor dot health value is less than or equal to 280, then do the following, which is the standard, what we had previously. So that shows that that is the completed, if I get this right, my indentation has gone a bit astray there, hasn't it? But that's not to worry. So this if statement now says that if we have 300, we basically do nothing. If we have a health value greater than 280 and less than 300, then we make the health value 300, so we max out our health. If we actually have less than 280 or equal to 280, then we just add that 20. So if I save that script now and head back into Unity and press play, when we walk into these hearts, nothing should actually happen. Oh, I was just compiling the script there, not to worry. It's a little bit slow. There we go. So nothing should happen if we walk into these hearts now. Nothing at all. They remain there. So it remains to be seen what would happen if we had less than 300 health. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I am going to um, let's deactivate this gate here. So I'm going to turn that off so we can walk through. And I'm going to turn our spider on so he can attack us. So spider enemy is on. So remember, we need to be attacked. Lose some health. And we should be okay. Okay, so our spider's coming after us. So let's get him to attack a couple of times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so he's got us a little bit. So, fingers crossed, guys. <laughs> we should be able to pick up these hearts and gain some health. There we go. There we go. So the last thing I want to quickly test on this, I know I feel like I'm, I'm digressing here, is the fact that we only want to increase to 300. So we just get attacked once, and then we should be able to see what happens. So attack, there we go. So rather than add 20, we should only add just a little to make ourselves equal to 300. And we do. Perfect. And now we should be able to pick this up. Nope. Perfect. So that's our heart sorted to give us some health. So let's undo those changes. So the spider goes off and the gate comes back on. Uh, we also need to sort out our spider boss, don't we? Because currently he's still based on the fact that he's taking just one heart off us, but we're not doing that method anymore. If you are, that's fine. You can keep it that way. Uh, so we need to go to our boss spider right here. Uh, we need to go to spider boss attack script. And we just need to change this right here. Health monitor, health value. Instead of one, let's say he takes 20 offers instead because he's a boss. So let's save that script there. So now our damage system is now all based upon the health bar that we have. So we're able to collect health, we can lose health, that should be okay. Obviously we'll deal with things like potions and increasing health and all that kind of stuff later on when we really get into math and mechanics. So the next thing I want to do is I want to add in those footstep sounds because they don't sound all that realistic at the moment. Uh, there's multiple sounds that we could have as uh, footsteps. And uh, we're just going to start off by a little bit of you know, changing how our character sounds. So on our FPS controller, we have the first person, not the first person controller. <laughs> yeah, first person controller. And down here in the first person controller script, we have a couple of different options. One being footstep sounds. So if we go into that footstep sounds, we have this right here. And you can theoretically change the size if you want to, but it's not necessary right now. That only comes into effect when we change 
uh, the type of ground we're walking on and we will get into that eventually. So what we want to do now is bring in some footstep sounds for the terrain that we are on. So let's go into audio and effects and I'm going to drag and drop these two grass step sounds and you can get these on the website. Head over there, downloads and assets, RPG, tutorial number 35 and you can get them there. All we really need to do is just drag and drop and replace these element zero and element one. So grass step onto there and grass step two onto there. And it should sound a little bit better rather than clunky. So you don't necessarily have to use the exact same sounds as me. I'm just using these. But it's better than the whole clunk, 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 which sounds a little bit unrealistic, especially on the grass. So feel free to source any of these, go anywhere you want to. There are plenty of websites that you can get uh, sound effects from. Uh, if you're using them in a commercial game, just be aware that uh, some may not be commercially free. You just need to remember that. Uh, so next thing, let's add in uh, some ambience. Uh, when I say ambience, I mean like something a little bit more to the scene rather than just quietness. So I'm going to right click and create a new folder in our audio and just call it AMB, shot for ambience. And in there, I'm going to drag and drop the other audio sound that you can get on the website. So this one, taking just a second to import there, not to worry. Uh, so this one will just basically overlay... Uh, any sounds as well. So I say rather than silence, we've got something. So on our first person controller, we have audio objects that we've created before. Let's duplicate sword swing down there at the bottom, hold control, press D to duplicate. And let's just drag and drop the am sound onto there. And tick play on awake. You could obviously play around with a pitch and volume, whatever, if you want to. Let's decrease the volume a little. And let's F2 to rename. And let's call this A and B sound, I guess. Uh, probably loop as well. So I'm going to save my scene right there. Press play. And let's see how this sounds. There we go. So we have something more to our scene now. Excellent. It's getting better and better every day. So it's really coming together this now, guys. Although I feel it's still a little bit incomplete as it is. But I think once we get into the next um, phase of tutorials, this is really going to come together. So save again, just in case. And I I'm sure I said at the end of the last tutorial that I intend to kind of get this cave um, all ready because this is going to be the next place we go. So we may as well create a new scene for this cave right now. So if I go to, where's all my scenes saved? Are they in the top folder? They are. So file and new scene. And I'm instantly going to file, save scene as, and let's save this as, well, let's follow suit. Let's have area 02. So um, I'm going to leave this tutorial there for now. Um, this is going to be a cool scene to make. So we're going to do things a bit differently than what we've previously done. Because I kind of want to have a cave, but then it turns into a puzzly kind of thing. So next tutorial, we're going to build this cave. Uh, but the, I think the main focus is we're going to bring over our player with all the abilities the player has, uh, plus the canvas, um, just so as we can seamlessly carry on the game, as it were. So until that next tutorial, guys, you keep building your world and just be ready, be ready to build this cave. Thank you very much for watching.